morning. Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. J. Good to be here again with you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank God, thank God for another day. Hallelujah. Thank God for you. Oh, I am so sorry. I apologize that I didn't bring our, do our monthly prayer meeting, prayer session. You know, I didn't do that last weekend. I was, I had my hands full. You know, I had um, some uh, commitments that didn't allow me to do that in a timely manner. So I was so drained, so, so drained. Yeah, so I didn't do it last weekend. I think I was on, even on a trip and then I came back. I didn't uh, make it in time. By the time I came back, I was totally drained. Okay. Anyway, I apologize. I am so sorry. I, don't, um, I was so occupied that last weekend and I was so tired, worn out. Forgive me, people of God. And, um, but I'm, we're here today. So that's why I'm, I'm doing it today. <laughs> I, I wanted to postpone it to next month maybe, but um, the Spirit would give me strength and pushed it forward. We're going to have it today, okay? So before we start, we're going to be, um, let's pray before we start. Almighty God, our Father, we come to you now in the name and by the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity for you to speak to us, for you to bring revelations to us, oh Lord, and draw us closer to yourself, draw us deeper into you. For you to deliver us and save us, O oh Lord. To give us, to infuse us with your knowledge that we, your people, will not perish. But have your wisdom, your understanding, your knowledge. To know what to do, to see what to do, and to do it well. To so know how to appropriate what you, all that Jesus has achieved for us, has done for us. And enforce them in our lives. We submit ourselves to you, O Lord. I submit myself to you, Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak to me, speak through me, and give your people understanding. Remove the blinders and the deafness, O oh Lord, whatever that is blocking our eyes and our ears, the veil that is because, Lord, remove it. Let your light, the light of your word, penetrate our hearts and our souls, recalibrating our heart and our souls and our minds, O oh Lord, even the cells of our body. For entrance of your word gives light. Dispatch your angels now, O Lord, of all ranks and divisions to assist, to bring to the, to the hearing and listening of this broadcast, everyone that you have prepared, that you have desired, you have planned and purpose for them to hear it, O Lord. Let them hear it, let them receive it, and give them understanding, O Lord. With the blood of Jesus, we Father, the Holy Spirit, and the light of your word, we shut down, shut out, I shut down, shut out, any manifestation of the flesh, the force of darkness, or the kingdom of darkness, any interruption on it, or opposition from them, O oh Lord, we strike it down. Holy Spirit, for you are the one who goes before the breaker that goes before us to break through every opposition. Lord, I ask you to break through every opposition and establish us, your people, in this, your word. And it's able to save our souls and save our families and save our children and save our bloodline and our cities and our nations, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Let your angels take, stand guard and take charge over the airwaves. Let it be clear, steady, network connections, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, people of God, um, today we will continue on fervent prayer before we pray. You know, 
anytime that you're watching this, you know, um, you'll be watching this program or you'll be, or you're watching live or you'll be listening to it. We'll be talking about, um, we'll continue on the power of repentance. You know, if I haven't prayed the power of repentance, repentance as part of, um, as part of um, strong, strong weapon of warfare. This revelation about repentance in this way has not really been preached in the church for many generations, at least in, in my own time, in this time, you know, that I have seen in many churches and in many places, you know, this type of repentance has not really been spoken about or preached or be taught. It's been like a thing that has been hidden, kind of. So on one hand, you have, um, you know, you have um, one, you know, set of believers, you know, believing that, oh, you know, you have to, we are never, we are, we are sinners, believers are sinners, and we will never come to the, you know, to the, to the sanctification or to what Jesus has already achieved for us. That is a wrong thinking because he's already paid the price. All we need to do is to appropriate it. We can ask God for forgiveness, you know, and God cleanses us. And then there's another, the other extreme that, you know, oh, grace covers it all. Jesus already paid the price. So we don't need to ask God for, for any forgiveness anymore. We still do need to, we need to, you know, for ourselves, for our families, for our bloodlines, because God does not see us as just as an individual. He sees us as a, as members of a bloodline. Like he told, like um in in um in Hebrew, um, where the writer of Hebrew was saying, he said that the children of Israel paid tithes because they were in the loins of Abraham when he paid the tithe to Melchizedek. Okay, and also God sees it as when he does some, he may make a promise to a person. And even if he fulfills it in that person's bloodline, 10 generations later, he still sees it as being fulfilled to the person he made that promise to. Okay? So, um, so it is important, it is very important that we take repentance seriously. In, in um, and for ourselves, yes, you know. And then the other, the third um, set of believers thought or thoughts, you know, believe that, um, you know, it's only for me. Repentance is only for me. You know what my parents did, what my siblings are doing, what my in-laws are doing, what um, other people connected to me are doing. It's irrelevant. What my leaders, you know, did. The political leaders in my area or in my or the elders of my family are doing it's irrelevant you know um it is important that you pay attention because like i said god looks at the bloodline whether they, they, you are connected to that bloodline by birth or by marriage or by in the spirit realm or by location you're connected you know to that like by look you have to stand in um, remember in the Old Testament when God, you know, um, releases as the Lord in Isaiah 33 verse 22, like we shared in the last broadcast, as Lord, he is the lawgiver, he is the king, and he is the judge, right? He is the lawgiver, he is the judge, and he is the king. I think that's how you put it. Isaiah 33 verse 22. So remember that when he says, oh, that um, when he says that, that, um, that, hang on a second, I'm trying to make sure that I am not missing anyone's, uh, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not missing anyone's um, comment if people are not hearing me. I want to make sure that they are hearing me, that you all, you all are hearing me, you know, I don't want to, yes, so, okay, hello, hi, Hanatu, Adamu, and Demia, Wasu, hi, everyone, okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you, just making sure that everyone is hearing me, 
Okay, so when he um, oh, what was I talking about again? When he um, so he is the lawgiver. He is so when he was dealing with the children of Israel in the Old Testament, after the you know, he will go after the leaders, the elders in the church, the priests in the church, and the elders, the leaders in the community, the political leaders in the community. So he would tell them that what they did is affecting the that area, that city, that town, that place. So it is important that we, as his ecclesia, as members of the body of Christ, as his church, he said, upon this foundation, that whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Those are legal terms, you know, and the accuser, he knows the kingdom of darkness understands this, how it works, you know, that any unrepented sin whether it is iniquity or transgression, iniquity is premeditated um, sin. You know, they planned it they, they, and then it, they, the person executed it. And it's not, not being repented for, you know. Our transgression, you know, as in whether you knew what you were doing or you didn't know, you, 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 sometimes you may lie out of pressure and all those things, you know, things like that. Not repented, you know. So like we discussed in the previous broadcast um, on prayer, on uh, the power of repentance last month, I, I, we shared, we talked about, you know, the, um, if you didn't repent of it, but how do you know that it has not been, that you are suffering the consequences of um, something, the consequences of something someone in your bloodline did or is doing and has not, has not been repented for is by you look at your own life. If you are not seeing the blessings of God that Jesus paid the price in full for you to have and enjoy, it is it is a, it's 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 core evidence. I give an instance again. For example, if you're always experiencing sicknesses, that is a sickness that has refused to break. You have stood on the word of God. You've confessed the word of God. You've been prayed for over and over. Every miracle service you know you've attended. You know you've gone to different men and women have got to pray for you. The devil and the demons have been, they have been binding and casting. You've been binding and casting. You've been standing on the word of God. But then it's okay to then tomorrow, it, you know, it comes back or after a while, it's like it's been a battle for years of a long period of time. And at some point you've even wonder, you know, um, didn't Jesus, is it that the word of God is not true? God cannot lie. You know, it, he cannot lie. If you are suffering from health, issues over a, a long period of time and then you look look invent, look at your family look at your family members maybe they're having the same kind of issues for example like asthma you know or um long diseases or sicknesses you find it that it is you know common in your in your family members you know in your maybe in yourself or in your family members you know it means that there is an unrepented sin an unrepented iniquity or transgression that is um, that you people are suffering the consequences of, okay? So I, I um, for, to, for today, we are going to be looking at the all-round repentance, a 360-degree repentance or a full-circle repentance, how it works. So we ask God for forgiveness. You know, you ask God, you come before God, you repent for yourself and your family and your bloodlines, okay? We had that all settled in the... We did, we discussed it in the in the last broadcast last month on prayer, and then, but in addition to that, you're going to be asking God. Um, I'm explaining what 360 degree repentance is. You ask the um, you forgive those who have done it to you. You know who have done that to you. You forgive them and release you release forgiveness to them before God. You know, and then you ask them to forgive you and your family. Your how your um, your bloodlines, you know, to forgive you, your family and your bloodline. So you ask forgiveness from those who your family have done it to. Okay, I give you an instance. So we come into the into the room of atonement, like like in Hebrews it says it there, the room of atonement. You know, is where the blood we can come and apply. You know, do thorough repentance. You know, we can come and apply the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, um, appropriate what the blood has done. Um, and the word of God, he said, the, the, uh, we get cleansed with the blood of, washed away. Our sins washed away. It starts with what? Asking God for forgiveness. So 
I give an instance. So I step into the room of atonement and I'm saying, Father, I need permission to step into the room of atonement. And we granted the room of atonement because we, anyone is invited, everyone and everyone that wants to do repentance is invited into the room of atonement. Okay? Into the room of atonement as it is in heaven. Because remember that all that Jesus, God told Abraham, um, Moses to build the, the tabernacle that is a, is a copy of what is in heaven. So I'm, I'm, I'm brought into the room of atonement and then I say, oh, Father, I stand before you this day to confess my sins, the sin of witchcraft or, um, or and divination or divination and sorcery that, that me, my family and my bloodlines have practiced all the way to the first person that did it in my bloodline, all the way to the first person that did it in my bloodline. And I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive us. We even use it to invoke sicknesses and diseases in, in other people's lives, in families, in, in their bloodlines. We are, I'm asking to forgive us. We are guilty. Forgive us and cleanse us from this um, iniquity and uh, from this sin. For you said in your word that when we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I'm asking to forgive us, oh Lord, you know, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, from this evil that we have done, not just against you, but against um, our fellow human beings, you know, our, um, other families and other people and other um, bloodlines. I'm asking to forgive us, mighty God. I was um, wash us clean with the precious blood of Jesus Christ and with the water of your word, and with the fire of the Holy Spirit, purify us unto yourself. It does not continue in my bloodline, in my life, in for future, in our future going forward, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Then, and Lord, I ask you, Father, everyone that has done it to us, I call them into this blood, uh, into this room of atonement, and forgive them on behalf of myself, my family, and my bloodlines. I forgive them totally and completely releasing the same forgiveness we've received from you where i released to them in the mighty name of jesus christ be holding not against them we totally from with all my heart with all our heart release that for forgive those people and their families and the blood that have done it to us and I ask you mighty god to restore them in the mighty name of jesus christ and for those who we have done it to i call them into this room of atonement and ask them to forgive us myself my family my bloodlines we are sorry we have wronged you we invoke the sicknesses and diseases on you and we are saying that we are sorry and ask you to forgive us forgive us and release us in the mighty name of jesus christ so as we as you have done it i'm just giving you an example as an example on how it is done you do what um you will start sensing if it's a heart remember any prayer you're doing should be heartfelt. It should be deep-seated. It should be passionate and focused. You know, you folk, if you're doing repentance, pray, you focus on that repentance from your heart. Focus totally and completely on it. And then when the, he said the, a contrite spirit, the Lord will not despise. He will not refuse. He will not reject. When, but that you come to him with that godly sorrow or, you know, total in heartfelt repentance, God is going to do it. He said he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So he will do that. So once that is done and we've received um, forgiveness from all that and forgiven them. Um, so look at in, in Matthew, you know, in, in Matthew chapter 6 from verse 12 to 13a, I'm reading from TPT. He says, forgive us the wrongs we have done as we ourselves released of forgiveness to those who have wronged us. Rescue us every time we face tribulation and set us free from evil. So we shouldn't, that is, you know, the our, the Lord's Prayer, as it is called, you know, it's really a format that God has given us, Jesus laid for us. We shouldn't even be asking God for deliverance if we have not repented, if we've not gone through repentance and released repent, you know, forgiveness to others and receive forgiveness. We shouldn't even be asking God for deliverance 
He said, the next step after that is to ask God for deliverance. What do you want God? I make requests. What do you want God to do for you? What deliverance are you looking for? Now I can now, after the repent, I can now, you know, go into um, supplication, you know, with him to, so, to request him, to ask him, Father God, heal me and my family. Heal us. Deliver us from this sickness of um, asthma or, or lung diseases. That's, you know, each mem um, most a lot of or some members of the family are suffering. Deliver us from this high blood pressure that they say it runs in the family. So do you wonder why when you go to the hospital, they ask you to fill the form where they want to know the diseases or sicknesses that your parents or someone in your family goes suffers? That is a trace to you know the trace in your bloodline to check the, what is common in your bloodline, you know. Or when someone like in my in my in my in uh, where I'm from, when people want to get married, they want to check what is in the in that other in each other's family or bloodline. What is common? Is it madness? Is it um, do they stay long? You know, do they sustain marriages? You know, relationship. What is going on? They want to know the good, the bad, and the ugly in that family that runs in the bloodlines. You know, so it it is already happening is just as we believers have taken you know have chosen to be blinded or have accepted the blindness of the enemy you know so what is it what is it i can assure you that um if you are experiencing maybe um rejection you're always being rejected for example there is the possibility that a member of your you may not be the one doing it you know a member of your family is doing that to others okay then let's look at Micah chapter 2 from verse 1 in New Living Translation. But I, I will give a little bit, you know, from New, um, New King James Version. It says, What's all awaits you who lay awake at night thinking up evil, if I'm um, thinking up evil plans? It said, Thinking up iniquity, thinking up iniquity. So iniquity is a plan executed. Um, you knew what you were doing, but you want to, your, your desire to achieve your agenda. You know, your mood, you know, you have them. Yes, is to supersede. You sit down, you plan it. This is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to do it. You know, that so you rise at dawn and hurry to carry them out simply because you have the power to do so. When you want a piece of land, this is a, it's given an example here. For example, when you want a piece of land, you find a way to seize it. When you want someone's house, you take it by fraud and violence. You cheat a man of his property, stealing his family's inheritance. And God has said, thou shalt not, you should not, what? Covet. So you see that you plan it. You know it is wrong. You know, you know, um, you, you, for example, that you, um, you don't want to buy them. So someone, maybe not you, but someone in your bloodline, someone, if you notice that you're being robbed, that, you know, you're being cheated all the time, or that you have the tendency, you know, to defraud other people. You have that. You see yourself, you know, easily, easily. There is no way. For something that even simple, you're always looking for ways to defraud, to not be honest, to not show integrity, you know, or to be of um to be truthful, you know, that that is treachery. If you are tending to you know doing treachery or that it is being done to you, there is a likelihood that that iniquity has not been repented of. Someone started it in your bloodline and they have not repented of it, and it has continued. And probably you're even seeing it in your children. You know, you're even seeing it in your children. Another example is a, is rebellion. If you're seeing your children to begin to rebellious, you know, think about yourself. Maybe at that stage too, you wait, and then think about others. Your 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 forefathers, your ancestors, rebelled against God. They worshipped other idols, other gods. You know, the fallen sons of God. They worshipped other idols. They made their own idols. They made themselves their the idols. Are you making yourself an idol? Are you what is replacing God? Are you making other people idols? What are you making wealth idol? Are you making, you know, your status an idol? You know, have you made an idol of it? Are you making, you know, in terms of self righteousness, are you being so religious, you know, that um, all you know is that all you you're after is that oh God said it and that's it, without even developing relationship with Him. So what have replaced the voice of God in your life? What has replaced that um connecting connecting with God that connection with God? In your life, whatever you have really you go after for what do you default to? You know, you find that it is an iniquity of um of um that started in idolatry that started in 
your family or rebellion or you know that already has been going on in your family so it is time to break all of that it is time and may i say it here that it's not every sin that's you know that we've sinned against god you know we have to now you know um sin um be asking that to say that we we forgive others or we or that, that they did it to us like idolatry you know it is really a sin against god so we should be directing it it's not all the time so that 360 degree repentance it has to do between us and god we just have to accept whenever the holy spirit uncovers something to us we have to accept and then when he's also telling you to release somebody that you did that did it to you you accept and release it and that you should ask from them you know, for uh, ask for all from the people that you have done it to, or your family, or your blood have done it to. You should be asking for forgiveness from them. You should do so. And if the Holy Spirit is also taking to that next level, where you start doing it for your communities, from you, for your communities, from your cities, from your nations, please do so. The key is following after the voice of the Lord. When you look at Deuteronomy twenty-eight. So, by the way, let's finish. Let's read one more verse. It says um, in that um, Micah chapter 2, verse 3, it says, but the, this is what the Lord says, I will reward your evil with evil. So what does the um, the the accuser does, the um, Satan and the kingdom of darkness, the force of darkness do? They take it. They take the word. that It does not be repented. So the blood of Jesus is not has not washed it away. So they take the or that the blood has not covered it. Remember in the Old Testament, the blood of animals covered it. They have not repented, you know. So they, they take that and go before God. Yes, they do stand before God, like we discussed in Job. They did that, you know, stand because and tell God, you see, the accuser accuses. He says the accuser accuses the brethren day and night before God. He is presenting his case in the court of heaven. So he accuses them day and night, and he says, look at. Um, he takes that in iniquity, that sin, that trans that has been repented for. By the way, he lied to you that you shouldn't, you know, and he's blinding you and telling you, you know that it's nothing oh you just paid the price in full oh it's already you know you don't need to you don't need to by the way he twisted the word of god and then because he doesn't want you to repent if the enemy knows that that is the strong weapon for you to repent do you think he will just hand it over to you or he will do everything to, to distort your understanding your knowledge of this weapon the strong weapon that is that can work against him enemies don't give their enemies you know don't give their enemies a weapon to destroy to dis that will destroy them that will stop what they are doing in your life. They will not. So he would deceive you. He would de he deceived us. You know he would he's the, the deceiver. He would deceive us into you know for with every means possible through every means possible. That is his job. He will, is the deceiver. His role is to deceive. So he will lie to us. So he will take it to the kingdom. Then meanwhile he's lying to you about it and blinding it and you thinking that everything's fine, everything is all right. And then you go, um, he takes it and goes to the um, before God, your father, that because also God is the judge, you know, he goes before him in the court, in his court and say, and so accuse us before him that we have not repented. Members of our blood, we have not repented. So it is still in our bloodlines. So even though you may cast out that devil, so we, we will tell God, the reasons why the legal they have legal rights to bear upon that family upon that person upon that bloodline the consequences of not repent said they did evil they will even quote the word they use the bible they'll tell god you said you will reward evil with evil that whatsoever a man sowed that shall he reap they have sown it in their bloodline therefore they should be reaping it because they have not repented of it and god will have to because he is the lord he is the just judge he will have to allow that like he did, we gave an example with Job. He allowed it, so he's going to allow that. So that is their modus operandi. So you need to understand that and do the do due diligence when the spirit will come back. Repent, repent. And when you take um another thing to do is to ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes, approach God with open heart. He said when you approach what God is saying with open heart, He would give you more revelation. So you sit down with open heart, not with filters, not with blinders, not with you know trying to box him that this is what he has been taught, this is what you understand, this is what you believe. It's irrelevant. It is you have to throw that all away. He said, even the little that you are saying you be, will be taken away, little, little revelation you think you got, you'll be taken away and be given to one who is open-hearted, you know, in receiving more from God. So go sit down with the Holy Spirit, ask him for more revelation, for more understanding. 
Where, why am I always never with money? Why am I always in lack? Why am I always going through poverty? Why am I, why is my family not moving head forward? Why do I take a step, 10 step, um, a step forward and then 20 or 100 steps backward? Why am I going through all this? You know, it's like a cycle all the time. You know, I have repented. I have done this. I have done that, you know? So why am I always being robbed? Why am I always being cheated? Why am I not possessing my possession? You can confess all the, the word you want to confess. It is not going to happen. You can make all the decrees and declarations you want to make. You can say amen to every prayer that is, well, you can receive a miracle and then you still, you, you know, and can, and still come back to the, um and, uh, and still need another miracle another day, you know, on the same issue because or as long as that does the inhibit or the sin has not been repented for, it will keep being, it will keep going in circle. You know, it will be, keep on being a cycle that you have to keep going through, a pattern that remains until you rise up and do the right thing. You rise up and do the repentance. That repentance wipes off any accusation. That accusation from the book of hell that the accuser brings, you know, before God, it wipes it up. So if they do not have any accusation they do not have any legal right to bring any um, consequence upon you, any curse, any to bring any evil upon you, upon your family, upon your legal, upon your bloodlines. They do not have any legal rights. So they cannot, they are not permitted. That is not how it functions. And even if they try to, you know, maybe someone goes to um, an evil altar to try to set up something against you, you know, it can only land if there is unrepented sin in your bloodline not just in your life in your bloodline it's can said a curse cannot land without a cause there has to be a cause even jesus in john chapter 14 verse 30 said the satan came looking and he has no offense in him. if there is an offense that is the cause that is the re that is the legal rights they have to land and they are always that is their job they do their job very well they are always looking for legal rights to use against you before god Yes, because you're a believer, you know, you are a believer. They're always looking for legal rights to use against you. So it is time for you to rise up. It is time for you to rise up and start act. you know, if, if, it is, if it's time for you to say no, it is time for us to say no, enough is enough. I am tired of being poor. I am tired of not having, um, I'm tired of being sick. I'm tired of, you know, going, um, making taking one step forward and a thousand step backward. I'm tired of being said, I'm tired of not coming. Every time I say, wait for the Lord, wait for the Lord. So what if your God is waiting for you, is waiting for you to do the repentance, you know? So ask him, be tired, be tired. Not, you know, some people will say, oh, you're suffering for Jesus. That is not, Jesus already suffered it all. You don't need to be suffering for Jesus. He doesn't need you to suffer for him. He already did that, you know? except in places that he has, he has called you to, you know, he has played, but make sure that the hardship you're going through, because he said this body is light and his yoke is easy. Make sure that the, that the issues, the hardship, the curses, he cannot be suffering curses for him. The things you're going through is not as a result of unrepented sin. It is in your hands. It is in your hands to deliver yourself, your family, and your bloodlines. That is why you are hearing this message today. It is in your hands. To say enough is enough, no more. Enough is enough. You know, my why am I always, you know, not having sustainable, lasting relationships? Why, why am I not having it? So if you've seen a pattern of evil, you know, a pattern of whether it is even some families that say, they say, you know, or some people they say, oh, they are always having uh, mental issues or maybe headaches, you know, that refuse to leave. Could it be that you know, the, um, like I said before? witchcraft number one thing go and read deuteronomy deuteronomy um 28 which was where we were going to we were going to you know um deuteronomy 28 verse what is it again from verse 15. so take your time and read it anything you see under the curses as god if he, if you are suffering it you're not supposed to be suffering it because jesus paid the price in full for that because all you need to do is to appropriate it you start with forgiveness after you have done all that, uh, you start with the repentance. After you've done the repentance that you need to do, then you can go and ask God. You will see when you said this sickness, this spirit of infirmity be gone. It will be gone for good. It, it doesn't have any room. 
only when it's coming to such and see if there is an offense, a non-repented sin, a non-repented iniquity, or a non-repented transgression. Never, never, never feel comfortable for with doing um with doing something to someone that is not good and feeling comfortable. Oh, it doesn't matter. Or, or justifying it. Never justify anything that the Holy Spirit reveals to you that you should be repenting for. Never justify it because it is not for our good. Accept the responsibility, accept the guilt, and plead the blood. Ask that the blood be, be totally repent of it. The blood is already there, okay? So in verse 15 of Deuteronomy 28, I will read it in... Um, NKJV. So, but it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord. Remember, he didn't say the he said, he said the voice because God speaks to us. He tell he he tells us what to do. He tells he said you don't obey the voice of the Lord. He didn't say the voice of Moses, the voice of the law. He didn't say the voice of the law. He said the voice of God, the voice of the Lord, your God. You didn't obey the voice of the spirit. You didn't follow the, the leading of the spirit of God. It always ends in places. The flesh will not want you to do anything that is good for you. That is for sure. You know, the flesh is always in enmity against God. Doesn't want anything that is good for you. The flesh will not want you to do it. So you cannot be walking by your flesh. You know, he said, to follow the voice of the Lord, obey the voice of the Lord your God, to obey carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today. So to obey, he said, then he said this question. So they, the kingdom of darkness, the first of that they take this, said, you are, Lord, they have not obeyed. And you, you're busy, they're saying, oh, we are, um, we are not under the law anymore. Yes, you are not, you have been given the right, Jesus paid that price for you to obey, to hear God for yourself and obey um, his instructions that the through this voice because he will quicken it to you he will tell you what to do how to do it so you need that is why we start we shared in one of our kingdom living intimacy it's not about following um, um, um instructions you want to hear god for yourself you want to you, you, he wants to breathe and speak to us breathe into us and speak to us so that we can follow after him okay you can follow after him so be sure to, it is important. Repentance, all around repentance is important, okay? So I don't want to take any much more, any more time. So we will go into prayers, you know, and remember that this is not the end of it. This is to introduce you to some and um to another weapon of warfare that you can use mightily to bring down those strongholds, to bring down the and deny so that the Force of darkness will be denied any legal rights into your life, your family, or your bloodline, and then into the anywhere else that the Lord has called you to. Okay, you are the cause you are the ambassador of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Utilize what He has already done, He's already done it. So, this is to equip you. So, now you're going to take this word that you've heard, go and sit down with the Holy Spirit and ask Him for more. You want revelation, you want understanding, you know, because this may be new to you. This is new to a lot of people. It was new to me too when the Lord introduced it to me. It was new to me, but I had an open heart. So approach it with an open heart, approach him with an open heart and ask him for more understanding and then go do it. So we're going to go into prayer and we're going to do it. I'm going to lead, it, I'm going to lead us to it, into it and you go do it more and more with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that you know, let him reveal because as he reveals it and what you need to repent, you concerning um either a consequence or consequences that you're bearing, or your family is bearing, your family members are bearing, or my bloodlines are bearing, or the tendency to do the same thing, you know, to do we have it, you're always doing it, you're doing it, you know, it doesn't or you're seeing your children or the people, your members of your family doing the same thing. And it, it's even like you know, some people have done some things that it's even like nothing to them. You need to break that cycle, okay? You need to break that cycle, okay. So, but before we go into um, our prayer, you know, the number, the first thing to know that it, you know, that even gives us the right, you know, is the acceptance of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. God sent Him; is the, the price that was used that was used to pay for us to redeem, so that we can come 
to God and we can appropriate, we can appropriate the, you know, all that, you know, he has done that we can be forgiven by accepting him, him, you know, repenting and accepting Jesus. So you will not have that of that authorization. You know, you, we, we enter into his presence really, you know, and, 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 and into heaven, you enter into heaven by Jesus Christ. There is no other way. And you cannot, we will not have the Holy Spirit living in you, his spirit living in you, if you have not received him, you know, you know, he's saying that, oh, we are all good people. Yes, we are all good people. I'm putting those in quote. I'm just repeating what you're saying. However, not all of us are going to enter into the, into heaven. Not all of us are going to have the right. Not all, not all of us has the right for the spirit of God to live in, in us and direct us and lead us so that we can hear the voice of God being led by the spirit to fulfill all that God has for us in this life. Okay, so if you want to receive Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer with me and he will come. For he said, with your heart you believe and you are justified. And with your mouth you make the confession, you have to confess it for yourself. It is how God has made it. So that because we have to admit and accept, you know, that we have gone astray. But that now we need a Savior. We want him to save us. We have to make that confession unto salvation and we will be saved. So repeat after me if you want to receive Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior into your life. Say, Father, I come to you now in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe in my heart that you sent your son Jesus to die for me. I believe that you raised him from the dead for me. Right now, I confess that I am guilty, I am sorry, O oh Lord, for sinning against you, for having gone astray from you. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive my sins and cleanse me. Forgive my family, forgive my bloodlines and cleanse us, O oh Lord, from all unrighteousness. We receive your mercy. I receive your mercy. I receive your forgiveness. And I receive your restoration. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I ask you, Lord, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I want you to be my savior. I receive you as my Lord and my savior. Be my Lord, O oh Lord. Fill me with your spirit. Order my footsteps. I want to know you more. Come into me and know me more. Draw me closer to you every day. With the blood of Jesus Christ and your word that said that you have redeemed me from the kingdom of darkness and translated me the kingdom of your son Jesus Christ, the Father, and, and by your spirit, I ask you, Lord, to sever me from every covenant, every agreement, every transaction, and every dedication made to the kingdom of darkness, to the force of darkness, or to the flesh. And restore us fully, restore me fully to the covenant that you made with yourself concerning me. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. God bless you. So now that you've received Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior, I ask you to find a church and join that is close to you. You can ask the Holy Spirit to direct you. You can also join us, you know, join us on Edenism. Yes, we are a church. We are on an online church for now, and we are reaching out to people, you know, let us know if you need more prayers. Let us know. Just send us a, uh, a direct message. Email us, you know, um, and we would we'll be glad to pray with you. We'll be glad to also, you know, um, um, issue, you know, counsel to counsel you if you want to. And then um, for, for those of us, for the rest of us, let us pray. We are going to go in, um, before God. Yes, uh, yes, I like to um always i like to when i'm praying on my own or i'm doing some serious 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 other kinds of prayers in the courts of heaven 
I like to cover myself with a veil, you know, um, with the with the prayer shawl, you know, um, as an as as to honor God, you know, in His presence because it is so powerful in some of those places. The glory of God that's you know, exhumes. Jesus even did it as well. How much, how much more us? Okay, so if you have a prayer shawl, that is fine. If you don't, that is fine. You know, um, you don't have. But I like to do it. Okay. So let's pray. We are going to go into the room of atonement. That is where we do it. Do repentance. Yeah, it's good. You learn it. Yes, it's good. Learn all these things, you know. It is for your good, okay? We are going to do heartfelt repentance for us, okay? And then we'll take it from there to however the Holy Spirit directs us, okay? Father, we thank you. We bless you, O oh Lord. I come with all my people, wherever they are right now. I come with them, mighty God. Everyone at the sound of my voice, I come with them. Everyone that wants to pray this prayer of repentance, with I come with them, Father. I thank you for this opportunity. We enter your gates with thanksgiving and we enter into your courts with praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that is speaking better things than Omar than the blood of Abel. We thank you, Almighty God, that for the altar of the cross where Jesus was sacrificed for us, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for paying the price in full for us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for raising Jesus from the dead for us. Father, we praise you that you are our Father, the, the merciful, forgiving, and gracious Father, you not only you do not only forgive us, O oh Lord, you do not only show us mercy, but you also extend your grace and bless us mightily, mighty God. You know, with 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 because you're good, because you are just good. We praise you that you are good and your mercy endures forever towards us, O oh Lord. And Lord, now I ask you for permission for us to step into your room of atonement, mighty God. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us into this room of atonement, for ushering us in. Thank you, Jesus, that you're here in this room of atonement waiting for us. So, Lord, on behalf of myself, my family, my bloodlines, the people that have entered into this, throne, uh, into this room of atonement with me, their families and their bloodlines, mighty God, we come before you, O Lord in humbling before you and asking you to forgive us, O oh Lord. Look into the book of accusations that the kingdom of darkness, the force of darkness have against us, O oh Lord. We repent of them all. We repent for being self-righteous, for being, for working with, um, with, its, with, the, with, the, um, with religious spirit, you know, we repent for putting, for worshiping man rather than worshiping you. We repent, O oh Lord, for walking away from you, betraying you. We repent for not paying tithes and giving offerings when, we, when we, it was in our hands to do so. We repent for not helping the poor. We repent for engaging in profane worship of the fallen sons of God and demonic entities and spirits. We repent, O oh Lord, for the use and, mis and abuse of other people through slavery, through slave trade, through in wars, taking them captives. We repent for engaging in sexual perversion, O oh Lord. For not, for not for disobeying you and following after the desires of our flesh. We repent for being greedy and fearful and anxious, O oh Lord, for walking in unbelief. We repent for engaging in witchcraft and divination and fortune telling and sorcery. It, yes, by manipulating others, whether it is through demonic forces through evil altars or through even making prayers in your name evil prayers in your name wanting you to to judge them wanting you telling you to take away their peace until they do something that we want them to do 
We repent for swearing falsely, even in your name, taking oaths. on evil authors, O Lord. We repent for holding bitterness and anger and walking in rage against others. We repent, O Lord. For being rebellious, being disobedient to you, being disobedient to authority that you've placed over us, O Lord. Being disobedient to parents, and to others, O oh Lord. We repent for being cowardly, for acting cowardly. We repent for defrauding others. Mighty God, we totally repent for defrauding other people, committing treachery against you, against others, for cheating and lying and being deceptive. We repent for breaking our commitments, O oh Lord. Our If sometimes we even intentionally knew we will not keep to that, but we went ahead and made those commitments. We knew we will not do keep them. We repent of that, O oh Lord. Mary, we repent for shut, shutting you out of our hearts, of our souls, of our minds, of our lives. We repent of it, O oh Lord. We ask you to forgive us. We are guilty. We are truly sorry. But Lord, you said that when we confess our sins, that you're faithful to God forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We ask you, merciful Father, to forgive us, O Lord, and to cleanse us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, with the water of your word, and with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Purify us unto yourself. For Jesus has made unto us sanctification. Purify us unto yourself, O Lord. Sanctify us unto yourself. And we ask, O oh Lord, we release forgiveness. We completely forgive those who have done them to us. All that we, yes, we're asking for, we, 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 we forgive them. Whether it is the elders, our ancestors, members of our bloodlines that, in, that went to dedicate their families, themselves and their families, their generations, their bloodlines, to idols, to fallen sons of God, to demonic entities. But it is our leaders that have done that, O oh Lord, through rituals and sacrifices they've made on evil altars. By that mighty God, we forgive them totally and completely. The evils that have been done against us and be done to us, we forgive everybody they have done it to us. The witchcraft that they have invaded, we forgive them. Mighty God, we totally, totally forgive them. By so doing, we are not exonerating the evil that do or diminishing it, no. But we totally, with the same forgiveness we've received from you, we forgive them totally and completely. And we ask that those that we have done it to, or members of our families or my bloodlines have done it to, done these evils to, oh Lord, that they forgive us too and release us completely and totally. We were wrong. We are wrong. We have shed innocent blood, denying families their inheritances and their livelihood. Lord, we ask you to forgive us. Forgive us, mighty God. Forgive us, the, let these people here forgive us. All that we've done is to let them forgive us. We ask you to forgive us. We had no right doing it to you. We were selfish. We wanted, our, we wanted to control and manipulate you. We had no right to do that. We wanted to intimidate you. We had no right to do that. We had no right stealing from you. We had no right invoking evil into your life. Mighty God, on behalf of 
myself and all my people that I've represented here, we ask for this forgiveness and receive release of forgiveness from all those people that we've wronged in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, I ask you to wash all of us clean, both the people that we have wronged and those that have wronged us and we ourselves. Every one of us here in this room of atonement, wash us clean with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, with the water of your word, and cleanse us, purify us unto yourself, O oh Lord. Purify us unto yourself with the fire of the Holy Spirit, the refiner, the refiner's fire. But I've done it. Restore us all around to your original plan and intent for us. Your original plan for our health for our peace, for our prosperity, for our protection, for our preservation. We told you that plan your purposes, O oh Lord, for us to fulfill the destiny that you have for us. Restore and restore us fully now, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. We receive. We receive your forgiveness. We receive your salvation. We receive your deliverance. We receive your sanctification. We receive your victory. We receive, we receive, we receive in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lord, I ask for permission for us to step out of the room of atonement now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, people of God. So after this, this you have done this, as the Holy Spirit leads you, he will then direct you either to go make supplications or to make decrees or to or that you need further, you know, to do a deeper repentance, do more repentances, okay? Because you know, this is just the layer preamble, and then there is other layers, you know. There, there are always layers. Can you imagine generations and generations of piled up in unrepented iniquities? We need to have that, all of that cleansed. The blood, there is no iniquity. He said the, the Jesus paid the price in full for the past, present, and future. So we can always bring the past, all that has been done in the past, we can always bring it into the present and repent for them. All that is going on in the present, we can repent for them. And even the future, as the Spirit of God will reveals to us, we can bring them to the present and repent for the present. Because remember, with God, there is no thing like a calendar that is not thing like a time and like nothing like um that we as the human calendar he is in eternity he is before time in time and out you know time came from him eternity came from him so he can always look back um current and forward which is also what the kingdom of darkness does they look at the back the present and the and forward and that any unrepented um sin there they bring it again but there is not so we apply that blood that by through repentance and receive that mercy and forgiveness, okay? So now we will take communion. If you do not have your element of communion, please bring it, get it. You can get um, get um, anything to represent the bread, the body, the flesh of Jesus Christ, and then, and then any liquid that you have to represent his, he, he, he is his blood, okay? Make sure it is maybe water. After that is the list, you will have water somewhere. Bring water you know, bring um, juice, bring anything you have, mineral, soft drink or something, bring it, okay? And I've, we have seen tremendous deliverance, tremendous miracles happen, you know, and bring any, any crackers, you know, wafer, fruits, something to represent the torn flesh of Jesus Christ, okay? So we go and take our communion now. Thank you, Lord, for coming to the room of covenants. Ah, thank you, Lord. So lift off the bread or what you have to present the torn flesh of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price in full for us. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you, Father, for raising Jesus from the dead for us. For sending this on Jesus to pay the price in full for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for raising Jesus from the dead for us. I 
as I eat this bread, I bring to this thorn flesh of Jesus Christ all the unrighteousness, the sins, the iniquities, the transgressions in my life, in my family, in my bloodlines. I bring to this thorn flesh of Jesus Christ all our unrighteousness. All our infirmities and pains. For Jesus bore our sins in his body and he also bore our pains and our sicknesses in his body. I bring to this thorn flesh of Jesus Christ every curse operating in my life, in my family, in my bloodlines. I bring to this thorn flesh. For Jesus was made a curse for us. For curse is every man that hanging on the tree. That we may receive the blessing of Abraham. I bring to this thorn flesh of Jesus Christ. All that we have lost. Your blessing, your inheritance. The inheritance you're given to us. The possession, our possession, our assets, our resources. Everything that we've lost. All our losses, I bring to this thorn flesh of Jesus Christ. Whether we give them up or it was stolen from us, I bring to this thorn flesh of Jesus Christ. Every form of division between us and you, Almighty God, I bring to this thorn flesh of Jesus Christ. And as in this thorn flesh of Jesus Christ, I decree, declare, and to receive your mercy, your forgiveness, your cleansing from all unrighteousness, your all run deliverance, your all run healing. Your aura and restoration, your aura and reformation, and every spiritual blessing you bless us with in Christ Jesus, including the blessing of Abraham and that of Deuteronomy 28. We say oneness with you, Lord. Direct our heart, our soul, our mind, our bodies in your purity and a deep passion for you. Lord Jesus, bind our hearts to your heart, our soul to your soul. Our mind to your mind, our body to your body, our eyes to your eyes, our ears to your ears, our mouth to your mouth, our hands to your hands, our feet to your feet, because one with you. Bind us to your destiny, your will, your plans, your purpose, and intentions for us, Almighty God. We will not meet the, the destiny you have for us for one day of our lives here on earth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. Partake of the bread. Now lift up the cup. Lift up the cup. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that has been shed for us. Lord, you said to drink the cup that this is your blood shed for us. So as we drink the shed blood of Jesus Christ, I decree, declare, and receive your mercy your forgiveness, your cleansing from all unrighteousness, from all filth, from all defilement, from all contamination, from all impurities, from all uncleanliness, from all infirmities. For me, my family, my bloodlines, and for the people that did it, that did any offense against us, or we did against, or we did too, oh Lord. We receive the cleansing by the blood of Jesus Christ, forgiveness and mercy. And we'll seal it with the special blood of Jesus Christ. You have redeemed us by with this special blood. We have redeemed us, O oh Lord. Therefore, we are redeemed from the kingdom of darkness and translating the kingdom of the Son Jesus Christ. Every debt, every penalty, every debt that has a name on it, we pay it in full right now with the special of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Every vow that we've made. Or was made on our behalf to the flesh, the kingdom of darkness, or the force of darkness. We renounce those vows now and we pay them in full with the special blood of Jesus, nullifying them and severing ourselves from them, O oh Lord. Every covenant, every we, we take this blood of Jesus Christ and sever ourselves from every covenant, every link, every tie, every connection, every an association or, or, or transaction or dedication made to the kingdom of darkness to the forces of death unto the flesh. We have been redeemed, O oh Lord. 
completely severed from them all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm activating to full, into full force, into full manifestation and active, oh Lord. The covenant you have made with yourself concerning us, the covenant we have with you, the covenant our fathers made with you, oh Lord. That it is so, you're the covenant keeping God, Lord, we remind them we be fully activated, mighty God, the three-foot covenant that cannot be broken. And with the special blood of Jesus, with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the light of your word, we cover ourselves completely and totally, our families, our bloodlines, everybody and every asset, every resource, everything you put on that worship and care. And I speak of this blood of Jesus, Jesus Christ upon us, upon, upon our streets. I said, and decree and declare over us that evil cannot and shall not befall us on the days of our lives. I call us greatly blessed, fruitful, and prosperous in every good way. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. But take off the cup. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God. Thank you. Thank you, people of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for listening. Please share this prayers. We need, we need to be delivered. 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 Because this is new, ask the Holy Spirit. It is not common in churches. It's not pretty common. It's not common in churches. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you more understanding, to give you revelations and understanding of what he's talking about. And please um, let us know to um, let, let us know of um any prayer request you have, you can email us with it um, or send a direct message on Facebook with it for us, okay? Inbox us. Um, also, let us know of what God has done, the testimonies, share with us. It is good to share the testimonies that others may also hear of it, that we may glorify God for it and also that um, others will hear and um, also be delivered, okay? So continue to pray for us and if there is... Um, and if you want to support us financially, that's fine as well. You can go to edenism, edenism.ch or you can go to our homepage on Facebook, click on learn more. You'll find see where it said learn more to learn more about us. It will take you to our web page and you can do what you can um you can um see where it says donate the donate button and you can always donate. Okay. So God bless you. It is so awesome. I'm so elevated, I'm so excited, I'm so happy and joyful. Whichever word you want to use, I um, to express this joy that I'm having. I'm so joyful that God is here and is delivering us and has, has brought us into this new era of glory. So we are doing our part as he reveals to us. I can't wait to see. I'm looking forward to what this invasion of glory is going to look like. Okay, so God bless you. Have a blessed weekend. I'll see you on the next broadcast. God bless you. Bye-bye.